Committee of the Whole for community grants. So after the Committee of the Whole meeting, the public hearing and the regular meeting will start. So anyone who wants to join the, the regular meeting, public hearing can exit this one and go on to the next. For counselors, the link is in an email. For the public, it's on our website, anyone wants that. So I'm calling this meeting to order and we're gonna, we're gonna adopt the agenda and then we're gonna go to public input and let anyone on the line who wants to speak about their um, community grant talk. So I'll take a motion to adopt the agenda. Janice moves it and Dirk seconds it. All in favor of the agenda? Okay, so now we're going to go to public input. And this is where anyone who wishes, any of the attendees who wish to speak to your proposal, and I'm just gonna call on you in the order that I see you here, and it won't necessarily be the order that we're gonna talk about. Um, we're gonna talk about the, uh, the proposals. Uh, oops, hold on one second, I've got another thing I wanna do. Um, I, I wanna let everybody know also that what we're going to do for, there's a couple of kind of comments I wanna make about this process. This is always challenging because the intent of this fund is to help nonprofits who support and serve our local community. Council has de dedicated 5.62% of our own source revenues to support the community grants. In, in 2021, this is anticipated to be a little over $287,000. But as with any grant fund that we deal with, there's always more demand than there is money available. And today requests total almost $326,000. We will do our best to be as fair as possible, but uh, you know there may be some disappointment. So first we're gonna hear from the groups who wanna speak to us. I would request that you do not repeat material that's already in your application. We've read all your applications. We wanna hear anything else that you would like us to know about. Um, any extra details of your group or your proposal. Then council is gonna talk about if there are any of the groups that have applied that we are actually not going to be able to fund. And then we will discuss all of the remaining groups and they will be discussed in the order of the spreadsheet that council has. We'll try and come to some consensus on how to allocate um, money. We have three new applicants this year um, and several groups have asked for increases. So this automatically creates the unfortunate situation where not everyone is likely to get everything they want, um, but it doesn't mean that we don't value your contributions and it doesn't mean that you know we don't appreciate everything you do, but we do have to operate within a budget just as we all do with our home budgets as well. Okay, so I'm gonna start the first person on the top of my list is Blackjack, Adele Pratt. You can speak. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear okay. you. Okay, good, thank you. Uh, well, I'm not, I'm not sure if I have anything that I need to say that's not actually in our application already. Um, however, um, I just like to say that if we do receive any funds, uh, it will um, help us put more money uh, in our reserve fund to put towards things like a purchasing of a new groomer, um, and um, maintenance on our expensive, very, very expensive equipment. We're also in the midst of working on our strategic plan, which uh, hopefully we'll have published in the new year, which should include some new infrastructure uh, that will benefit all the community. We're already up to 900 members this year. Normally we have 730 members, but we're already up to 900 this year. So I think we are serving um, a large proportion of our population. And I think everyone is really appreciating being able to get out there and get some fresh air and cross country ski during this pandemic. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna ask council, do you have any questions uh, for Blackjack about their proposal? Okay, I'm gonna move on to Tourism Roslyn. Andres, are you there? Uh, yes, I'm here. Uh... Can you folks hear me? Hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, I don't really have a whole lot to add. Uh, I just want to thank Council for going through this process. I know that it's not easy to to allocate funds for an oversupplied or an oversubscribed program. So I really appreciate the efforts that you're going through, and I'm here to answer any questions that you may have about Tourism Roslyn. Okay, thanks, Council. Are there any questions about Tourism Roslyn, Janice? Hi, Andres, how are you? I'm good, how are you, Janice? I'm 
doing well, thank you. I was just wondering, um, I guess you guys used to get a bit more destination BC funding. Um, and I saw your answer to the email that you are expecting to get uh, 50,000 this year. Um, was there another stream that you were applying for previously or that Tourism Rosin applied for previously that's no longer available to you? Or is there some other reason that you're not um, applying there? No, there is nothing else available. So we're, we don't know what we're going to get for next year. Uh, the province decided that they're going to grandfather in last year's application. So basically they said, we don't have to reapply this year. They will just make, we'll get money. Will they make a decision? And then there's also some emergency funding that's floating around that we might get, we might not get. The province understands that DMOs, uh, destination uh, marketing management organizations and sea level are in a strange position because we basically are running on flat revenues because the hotel industry is not really operating right now. And we're hoping that it's gonna change soon. Uh, so yeah, we expect, uh, provincial funding to come in, but we don't know what it, how it's going to look like. Okay. Yes, Janice. Sorry, I did have just one other part I noticed in your write-up, which was excellent, by the way, thank you, um, um, that you said your non-peak season, season accommodation revenue was the highest in our history. Was that for this summer? No, it wasn't for this summer. That was last summer. Okay. <laughs> so that was, all, all that financial data I had was for the summer of 2019. 19. The summer of 2020, I have the data and it's obviously very low. Although, again, if I would send you the data and I don't want to get into details, it looks all over the place because there were tax deferrals from businesses. So it looks like July was the best month we ever had because we got some money from February. But no, our revenues were extremely low. So we're, we're probably operating at 50% of what we used to have. Thank you very much. Okay, any other questions for Tourism Roslyn? Yes, yeah, Chris. I do. Uh, Andres, you mentioned in your report that you were uh, working off of your reserves. How deep did you have to go this year? Uh, well, we made the decision, the board made the decisions that we're going to actually going to use, if we need to, we're, we're going to go and empty our reserves, hoping that uh, we need that for the recovery. Uh, that being said, because there's all these stop and goes to marketing, uh, I don't anticipate that we're going to spend all of our reserves, actually, because we would be spending right now, but obviously everything we do right now is on hold. So once we can start marketing in January, we'll start going, but I don't anticipate that we're gonna actually empty all of our reserves. So hopefully we're gonna have some left at, well, at the end of the, the season. Okay, that's, that's great. All right, next up I have RCAC and I see a couple people from RCAC. So Andy, are you the speaker or somebody else? Looks like Andy. Is Andy unmuted? Okay. Unmute. There. Does that work? Can you hear my? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you and welcome. Yeah, I don't, know, don't suppose you can see me. You're a good looking bunch, so I, I didn't need to do my hair after all. Uh, first, uh, thanks for the opportunity to just say a few words. We, we did... Uh, omit some information from our application uh, because uh, we, we understood you were trying to streamline things a little bit. And I don't want to prejudice our application by not uh, discussing some of our um, achievements this current year and some of our plans for next year. Um, but uh, first up, I'll just mention that our request is a standstill request from last year of $10,000. Our annual budget is 100,000 in round terms and our general and administrative costs for operating the organization are about 30,000. So the municipal grant, um, community grant of 10,000 represents a substantial portion of our operating uh, expenses or revenues uh, which uh, cover our programs. 70% of our um, budget goes back into the community and projects and some of those projects you've seen in evidence of already this year 
I'm just going to review some of them. Uh, under the performance series, we had two performances early in the year, in January and February. That was uh, a theatre production and a music performance, Cas Meridian. Um, we have uh, plans for some programmes uh, in the first half of the new year, subject to COVID restrictions. Uh, we, we have an agreement in place with Council to make use of the Lily May Room. We understand the, the COVID regulations limit the number of people we can squeeze in there, but we do hope to be able to run a couple of back-to-back one-hour performances with an inter interval to change uh, out the audience, sterilise and bring in a new audience. In the public art uh, area, you will have seen some... Uh, um, signs of our achievements there. There's a new statue outside the Miners Hall we're calling Lily May, a uh, beautiful piece that uh, I think really does uh, a great uh, job of setting off the Miners Hall and uh, really looks good uh, in front of it. And we had a, our first carving symposium in September. We had three carvers uh, working uh, in uh, downtown area in, uh, on, on Columbia. Three uh, wood carvings were produced and installed on Centennial Trail uh, and that has uh, received a lot of uh, uh, positive feedback from the community for, for hosting that event and, and pulling it off in, uh, in spite of COVID. Uh, we have also purchased V formation, those are the geese outside uh, the chocolate shop, uh, so that's now a permanent uh, uh, part of our collection uh, for public art. In visual arts, there were two major successes this year. The first was the Art of Adornment, our first fashion show, a gala held in the Miners Hall, which received uh, a lot of uh, enthusiastic support and something that we'll probably repeat again in, uh, in the future when, when COVID allows. So that, that was uh, a smash hit. And then we had uh, in November uh, the Art of Craft exhibition held at the Bank of Montreal. And over 11 days we saw 250 people come through and view that exhibition and a number of them purchased pieces, which uh, was uh, uh, deemed a, a very successful exhibition. There are plans for two more exhibitions in the new year, one in photography in February and uh, a spring equinox ex exhibition in March. In our youth programme, we've run two outdoor camps, one on mountain biking in June and one in the skate park in September for youth. We had six youth attend each of those and uh, currently there's a, a youth winter colouring contest underway in town. A lot of enthusiastic kids colouring in and submitting uh, their, their drawings and we have a skateboard snowboard painting workshop planned for January. So that's in the youth programme. And finally, I'd just like to mention the arts plan, the conclusion of a, a process that's almost a year and a half old now to generate an arts plan for Rossland. That document has been completed and finalised. Uh, it should be in your hands this now. If you haven't already seen it, you will do very soon. And that is uh, the... the, uh, uh, the timing of that was intended to coincide with the OCP planning process that you are undergoing at the moment so that it might uh, feed into that. So I think I've spoken to all of the major programmes and points uh, and I'd be happy to entertain any questions that uh, Council may have. Council, any questions? I, I have one, Andy. Do you have an estimate of how, mu how much revenue was lost for cancelling programs that you had planned on doing in 2020? Yeah, we, we have uh, probably lost about 
$15,000 in revenues. Um, but uh, that is offset by uh, a decrease in expenses because you know, we didn't have to pay the artists and the sound techs and so on. Most of the, the, uh, those lost revenues are earned revenues from the performance series, which, uh, which we sadly had to, had to postpone. Okay, okay, that's great. Thank you very much. Um, okay, now, uh, Megan, you were also there for Roslyn uh, Council for Arts, RCAC. Do you wanna add anything or did Andy do a good job and cover it all? You think? Okay, I'm gonna say no, if I don't hear from her. Okay, I'm gonna move on to Dave Diplock, so KCTS. Good evening, Council. Um, nothing too much to add to our application, um, other than uh, the trails have been helping people with their snow anxiety as we're, we're waiting for more to show up. Um, so if there's any questions you might have, um, I'm here to answer them. Okay, that's great, Council. Any questions for KCTS? Anything there? Okay, short and sweet, I'm not seeing any hands. And you guys yell out if I miss you, because I might, I might miss you. <laughs> um, okay, so Doug Jones looks like Trail Chamber is up. Uh, yeah, I don't have a whole bunch to add to um, what Erica presented, but if there are any questions, I certainly will uh, answer them. Okay, Council, any questions for the Chamber? This is one of our new applications. I know yeah. it was asked, uh, Andy here, uh, I know it was asked that we um, we get some idea of the number of Roslyn businesses that are now participating in the chamber. Uh, Doug, could you confirm uh, what our membership is here in Roslyn now? You know what? I don't have those figures right in front of me, but I believe it's 15. Okay. Great, thank you. Okay. Thanks. And I'm getting a note that we can't have Megan talk without making her a panelist. So I'm hoping that Megan doesn't have anything to add or if she does, call Andy. <laughs> hey, sorry about that. Um, all right, next up we have Jan Lupin. So Jan, are you here for Blackjack? Sorry, I didn't, I didn't catch you there when I got Adele on. Is Jan able to speak? We may be having the same trouble. Okay, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Oh, Adele is representing Black Jack. I'm just listening in. Okay, perfect, thanks. I've nothing to add. That's all right. Okay, now we have Wild Safe, looks like Wild Safe, Kamloops, BCCF. Hello, Mayor and Council. It's Vanessa Hisnardi, the Provincial Coordinator here from Wild Safe BC. Um, I'm here to represent Wild Safe BC and answer any questions regarding our application. Um, as today, we're looking for a three-year commitment to match the year commitments we have from neighboring trail and be here, there to support you if you decide to pursue Bear Smart Community status, which is quite exciting. Okay, that's great. Does anyone have any questions for Wild Safe? I have one. Ha has there been any progress of getting Warfield involved because they are right between trail and, and Roslyn, right in the bear corridor, so to speak? Absolutely. So because we have funding from the Columbia Basin Trust, we also uh, do visit Warfield and do some education for them as well. Okay, that's great. Um, all right, Council, any questions for WildSafe? All right, we are moving on. Um, okay, I see Laura is there and also Sam. So are you both speaking for tennis or one of the other of you? I think we're just here to ask, answer questions if you need any more information than what we sent. Okay, okay, I think uh, uh, Sam had his hand up. Um, Sam, much. did you have something to add? Not really, just we're here to answer questions. Uh, 
the change this year is uh, we're asking for an increase to cover the insurance that the uh, city asked us to get last year, um, something we haven't done in the past. Okay. Um, council, any questions for tennis? So um, I, I, had, uh, I had a couple actually. Um, I'm still a little bit confused about the insurance myself because I thought the instructors, because they're uh, Paul, and is Paul your only instructor, first of all? Paul. Yes, and he carries his own insurance. Yeah, that, that's what I thought. So the, the $2,000 insurance that you're carrying is just for really other volunteers if somebody, I don't know, trips over a broom that one of your volunteers leaves out, something like that. Is that kind of, kind of it? Well, the city hasn't really clarified exactly what we needed except mainly quite a bit of liability. And we're, we're open to the public at all times. We're not on a private lease. Right, okay. And then the other question that I had is, have you, have you done anything to maybe kind of increase the effectiveness of your membership drive or really encourage, I don't, I don't know how many, I don't play tennis myself, unfortunately, but I don't know how many people are good about putting the toonie in the box or, coming members or that kind of thing. Do you do much in terms of a membership drive to try and increase your own revenues? We're mostly dealing with maintenance, which is a lot more than it will be, hopefully once the courts are reconstructed. There's okay. just a real lot of to do to keep the property and the courts going. And uh, I'm not an administrator or a marketer. <laughs> okay, all right, that's great. And we, we appreciate you keeping up the uh, city owned tennis courts for sure. Okay, council, anything else on tennis? Yeah, I've got a question, Kathy. Yeah, go ahead, Stuart. Yeah, I'm, I'm still not really clear on what's going on with this insurance. I mean, is there, has the Tennis Society actually received a quote for insurance? I think that was $2,000. But is that, that's, that's actually, is that what we're requiring of them? And is that actually a formal quote that is aligned with our requirement? Or is this just, I, I'm, I'm just not clear on this. Yeah, I know. I, I think none of us are completely clear on this. Um, Sam or Laura, do you have anything? Otherwise, we might just need to get staff's input on this. I can, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, I can, this all came about because of a, the agreement that was given to the Tennis Society last year by the city and required us to maintain liability insurance for the courts. Um, that was the requirement, $5 million. So we went out and got three quotes. Um, the first quote was from RHC, which is Ross, and it was $2,000. The second quote was from a company who recommended that we actually go through Sports BC. So then I approached Sports BC and they came up, they wouldn't give us an exact number, um, but they said it would likely be cheaper than the 2000, but not much that we came out of RHC. The whole insurance thing is being driven by the city's requirement in the agreement that they put forward last year. Um, in terms of memberships that you were asking about, um, that's a bit of a contentious issue on the executive vote actually running memberships because none of the other cities in the area actually require memberships. The so city of Trail, nobody else does it. We're kind of very unique in that way in a, in a public court to actually charge a membership or a drop-in fee. In fact, we're the only ones in the area that I can think of that do that. Yeah, well, <laughs> some of those other places have some big taxpayers that help defray their expenses. We're kind of nickel and diming, unfortunately. Um, okay, but in answer to Stuart's question, you got three quotes and 2,000 seem to be the one that meets the city's requirements. Yes, it'll be, we think it'll be a little bit cheaper than that, but we have to, to get that insurance, we have to join Sports BC, which we've never done in the past. So. Okay, okay, thanks, Sam. All right, any other questions for tennis? Looks good. Uh, we are... We're moving on to the museum. I think that's probably Joelle, but we'll see. 
Museum. Not sure if talking is permitted for the museum. Well, why don't we go on to the library and we'll see if, uh, we'll see if. Hello? Oh yeah, okay, who've we Joelle. got? Yeah, uh, Joelle's here. Okay, good, thank you. Um, do you have anything to add to your application? No, but I can answer questions. Okay, anybody have questions for the museum? We spent more time getting you live than we have questions for. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, no questions for the museum. Um, I see Judith Lawrence there, but I think she's probably tennis, which we've covered unless there's something else there. We are now to the Roslyn Library. Who have we got for library? Is that Beverly? Hello. 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 This is Catherine Spence. I'm representing the Roslyn Library. I'm a board member. I have a few things that I'd like to add in addition to our application. Great. Um, okay. Well, we're a really busy library. We get over 50,000 annual visits typically. That's one of the highest per capita uses in British Columbia. Also through the library, um, our interlibrary loans gives us access to over 11 million items. So that's pretty great. Uh, besides just the traditional books, we have a full catalog of eBooks and we are now just starting to also be able to lend out e-readers, Kobo for our patrons as well. One thing you may not know is that we have a platform of online courses. Those are called the Gale courses and they are free. There are over 350 courses. We've had over 73 people taking courses since March. Uh, languages are really popular, but there's lots of IT, gardening, medical terminology, all kinds of things. So that, that's a really good addition that we have. Um, we are also, I call us the unofficial office center for Rossland. We have the only public printer, copier, scanner, which gets a lot of use. It's hands-free right now. Um, we have several businesses that run a tab with us because it's cheaper to use our printer than to maintain their own. We, our meeting rooms get a lot of use, not right now, but in normal times, 80 uses a month. Um, last of all, we're really excited. We have a new project. We just got a big, um, nice donation from the Trail Bottle Depot as the charity of the month for November. And that's going towards putting in a professional um, art hanging system for local artists for, um, to, that's capable of hanging all different forms of art. And that'll be a really um, beautiful addition to our new um, renovation. So that's basically all I have. I wanna thank you for your continuing support over all the years. And we are asking for an increase and that's because the minimum wage has gone up 4%, CPP is going up and our insurance also went up 50% in 2020. Um, are there any questions for me? Any questions for the library, anybody? Doesn't look like it. We appreciate all you do. And we also do understand and, and feel badly that the Roslyn Library is underfunded compared, compared to others. We did, did uh, look at your report and the stats that were in there. So thank you for providing that. Okay, we still have the museum on the list who would like to speak, but I think we're having some technical difficulties there. Um, Rachel, can you chime in and tell me what we're doing here? This is Joelle from the museum. I did ah, you're in. already talk. And we already had Joelle. Yeah, there's no questions. Oh, okay, okay, that's right, that's right. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't mark you off my list. Okay, then I think we've okay. hit everybody, unless there's somebody else on there that we didn't get. Okay, good, sorry about that. Um, okay, so now we've heard from all of our groups and now we're gonna move into the next part, which is the difficult part. We need a motion from any councillor who wishes to vote someone off the island. Are there any groups that we will not um, entertain a, a uh, grant this year? Okay. I will start that off. Um, Andy, uh, I will make a motion that uh, we don't entertain supporting Golden Bear with their request. Okay, do I have a seconder for that? 
Jana seconds it. Okay, Andy, give us your rationale. Um, I looked at their application and I know that um, it is a successful uh, enterprise here in the community. And I, uh, although they do um, uh, work under the auspices of a society, they also uh, use a business model. Um, so I'm uh, uh, knowing that the, there is a high demand for, for those services within our community, uh, especially it seems in the last decade or so, as we continue to have more and more kids uh, within the community. Um, there is also other private uh, uh, suppliers of, of childcare services in our community. I think it's really important to make sure that we don't uh, differentiate or compete, uh, create a competition between them that's, that, you know, by supporting one over the other. So I think it's really important that we maintain that. And yeah, I, I think that's, that's my number one reason there. Okay, and Janice as the seconder. Uh, Andy's covered all the points I had as well. Okay, uh, further discussion? Uh, Stuart, got anything? Terry? Comments? Oh, you're muted. Sorry, no, I, I follow that line of question. I, it, it makes sense to me that um, we don't put our oar into that sort of pond with, uh, with competing um, things. So uh, I'd like to go along with what Andy has supported there. Okay, Chris. I feel the same way um, in an effort to maintain a level playing with the uh, other entities in town here. Um, I, if I, I would love to give five grand to everybody. Okay, Dirk. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, my, I concur with uh, everyone. Okay, I think the only the only comments I would make is that you know I see tremendous value in early education. It's really really important, but this proposal does compete with our private daycare, and it wasn't a strong application to me for another reason. Because when you look at their financials, they're in a strong financial position, and they don't seem they weren't they haven't asked anyone else, and they don't seem to do a lot of, of their own own kind of fundraising. At least that didn't come through. And to me, those things are also important when someone's coming to ask for taxpayer money, that they also go to their own members, their own people who, who use their services and see what they can get there. The other thing is that because of the way the province is set up, my understanding is that they, everyone is, is gets the same kind of um, uh, subsidies from the government. So it's not like they offer childcare at a lower price than other daycares. So to provide supplies to them would definitely be competing. Um, okay, so I'm going to call the question on this one. All in favor of not supporting Golden Bear, although we love little kids. Okay, that passes. Okay, do we have uh, any other uh, any other group that we're going to not support at this point? That anyone wants to make a motion about? The next thing we do is go through and discuss each one. I mean, we discuss them when we vote them off the island too, but we can, you know, take them off now if we want. No? Okay. Okay, so to... now, oh, what? Yeah, that just seems to be the only one that was uh, unanimous from our, our yes. spreadsheet, so yes. everything else worth discussing. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to get the spreadsheet up, which means I'm going to do something funny here with my screen. Um, see if this works. <laughs> I can't see anybody. Okay, hold on one second. Well, that's not going to work because I can't see you guys and still have my sheet there. It doesn't look like because I'm not sharing my sheet. I'll come back. Okay. Oops. Hold on. Hold on. All right, there you are. Okay, so we're just going to go through the sheets. Uh, first up, we have blackjack. So, oh, good. Thank you. That helps. That helps. Okay, I do want to say one thing that I that I did. I know I said we weren't going to do this based on the averages, um, but when everybody put their stuff into the spreadsheet and I looked at the averages, there was something that, that did kind of make sense for most of them. But anyway, okay, so let's start off with Blackjack. Can I have a motion to do something with Blackjack? Janice. 
Yeah, I'll make a motion to uh, support Black Jack for four thousand dollars. I feel like I'm playing Jeopardy here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do I need? I'll wait for a seconder and then continue. Okay. Do we have a seconder? I'll second that. Okay. Um, the reason that I, I look at Blackjack and I think that we would like to maybe give them um, some support is that they provide a really uh, great activity for a lot of Ralston people. As a matter of fact, um, you know, I went and I look, went back and looked to see how many people said they cross country skied in the MODIS report and it was 63% of the people and it was the fifth most important activity. Um, and one of the things that they said in their application was that they really wanted to uh, get their books in order so that they had the possibility of going out and applying for additional grants from other people, which is always a good thing. Um, and, you know, we do support a number of um, societies uh, in their administrative duties or administrative work in the community. And I think that uh, Blackjack provides some really great value for our community. Um, you know, provides a service that attracts and retains residents, and and that's really what they're. Uh, that's really all we can ask them to do. Okay, and the seconder. That's me. Yep, we will speak. So, um, relative to the ask, uh, how Kathy are we going to apportion our recommended amounts? Is that going to be averaged out in the end? Uh. You know what? I was hoping that we wouldn't do it that way with these. That's how we do with the SIP ones, right? And I was hoping we'd come to consensus on these. I did okay. put a column in there. If you look at column D that's up there, that is the average from how it, from how it is. Um, okay. And I'm not sure if it's going to work this way or if it's going to work this way or not. I mean, we're, I, I think right now, I mean, originally what I said, we go through each group and talk about it. We don't, we actually don't necessarily have a motion on, we don't have to have a motion on the table because we might have some things as we go around. I don't want the first one being penalized because of something we do with the last one, you know? Gotcha. So maybe we should start over that a little bit and, and not have a motion on the floor. Just let everybody have their thoughts on the group and then we'll come back and do motions. If everybody's okay to back step. Stuart? Yeah, I was just going to suggest that. It just seems, you know, we're, you know, unless we're going to be perfectly anticipating everything else, we could corner ourselves if we're fixing amounts as we go through. Yeah, well, if you remember when I sent out my little thing about how we're going to do this, that's what I said we were going to do, and then I immediately didn't do it. So I'm sorry. I apologize about that. So let's just have everybody go around, give us your thoughts about Blackjack, and we'll go to the next, and then we'll come back around and do the motions, okay? So Andy, talk about Blackjack. Okay. Uh well, I certainly um, feel that it, it's worthy of uh, contribution and support. Um, the club, as Janice had pointed out, has, has uh, become a, a main player in our community. Uh, and I know, as Adele had mentioned in her presentation, um, that the club has experienced 900 plus members this year, a record amount. And that's almost one in three or one in four uh, people in the community. Um, and, I, and it is it is growing uh, exponentially, and, and COVID has a lot to do with it. Uh, but I also anticipate that this growth will continue um, as people get to realize the value of this winter activity um, and uh, the success of the club. And it is a volunteer uh, volunteer driven organization, uh, and has been very successful for over thirty years in the community. And its success now is especially appreciated by our community. Um, I can't mention the number of people that had said they were so thankful, especially last winter when, when everything else closed down in March, uh, Blackjack was able to maintain uh, the facilities and continue uh, into early May actually. So okay. I think they're very worthy of some support and uh, I would like to see, uh, hopefully people would, the uh, rest of council will consider that. Okay, that's great. And I, I had to add one other thing. We got to be kind of really quite succinct with our comments because we got a lot of groups to get through. We're supposed yeah. to finish by 45. So, <laughs> but thank you, Andy. That was valuable. All right, uh, Dirk. Um, can you can you hear me? I had to move yep. rooms. Uh, yep. For me, um, I looked at this uh, so I don't have to repeat myself on others. Uh, the capacity of the organization to secure funds and uh, honestly, I think it's great that there's 900 uh, memberships, but that's a small addition to each membership to cover the, 
$13,000 ask. So uh, for me, I felt that there are other really, really good avenues for them to get money. And uh, I didn't support the ask on this one. Okay, Chris. Yeah, the list of, uh, of opportunities was, was quite large. And I had a tough time supporting this one as well, just for the reason that I, I believe that there are some others um, within this, our group of choices that uh, I'd like to support a little bit more. Okay, Stuart. Yeah, I mean, I love Blackjack and support it, but uh, it's a fee-for-service organization. They can just charge everybody a little bit more. It's pretty simple. Okay, thanks. Terry? Um, two points that have been covered already. Um, uh, their uh, user fees, could there could be through user fees, other ways to generate this income. And I was torn with uh, the other asks that were on there. And this was a new one for them. And I was... Um, I totally appreciate and, and love Blackjack, but uh, hoping they can um, get by and allow us to spend our money across some other organizations. Thanks. Um, I agree with what people have said. I also am a devoted Blackjack fan, but I also do see there's other ways for them to get money. And I also worry that uh, if we start supporting different clubs, membership-based clubs, um, there'll be more clubs that will come to us and ask us to cover their administrative fees too. This differs from RCAC where RCAC isn't really membership driven, they're event driven and project driven and they don't have the same um, sort of ability to raise fees on things. So I see them different. But I look at, you know, Red Mountain Racers, right? They could come to us and want, you know, un and want support for, for their group too. And I think we, we do have to be careful and kind of stay to our, our, main, uh, our main mandate. Um, okay, so next one up is CBEAN, which is we are pre-approved there because they still have an agreement going, so we don't need to talk about them. Golden Bear, we've covered. Sustainability Commission, this time I'm going to start with Terry. Oh, hi. Um, great. Yeah, I think um, I've been connected with the Sustainability Commission for a long time, and I'd love to see their, uh, their work carry on. They've got... Um, um, a good core group of uh, um, task forces that have uh, a good work plan in front of them. And I, I think they're uh, a bare bones operation as it was. So um, I think uh, I'm happy to support their ask. Okay, Stuart. Yeah, I support the group. Um, I didn't think they made as, as strong a case on why they needed the size of that increase, but generally I like what they're doing and I gave them a bit of an increase there. Okay, Chris. Um, yeah, very similar to that. Um, I think that uh, as we move into the OCP, um, the Sustainability Commission is going to be even more front and center. So I'd like to see them funded. Okay, Janice. Yeah, I really like um, what they're doing. Um, I did give them a bit of an increase, uh, or I, you know, I had planned on giving them a bit of an increase. Uh, but not the full one because we have already um, decided to give their new task force, the economic task force, some money on the side. And I think that the task, the economic task force may not last for a full four years. So I thought that we could, uh, we could look at them annually. Well, I think we only did give them, the, the economic task force was only a one year start. Then they go into the, they go into the regular SC. It's just the startup. Um, Andy. Andy, yeah, I, I, I certainly uh, feel that um, uh, certainly with some new leadership this year as well coming in, uh, that will help, and, and new members, that will help to spur some new programs and projects. So I'm, I'm in full support of providing that, that continual support to them. Okay, Dirk. Yeah, <clears throat> I think on this one, I chose to support with the full ask, uh, just because they are a city group that... Um, I think with more money, they would do more things. They are wholly city initiatives that money does come back directly in. So I felt that this was a really good opportunity to get more done in our direction with 100% and et cetera. So supported it 100%. Yeah, I, I agree with that position too. Like the Heritage Commission, the Sustainability Commission is a commission of council. That's something we created. So we do have, a, and, and as Terry well knows, we used to support it a lot more, I mean, like $30,000, right? But even more, initially, the numbers were even bigger. And they did a lot more 
when they were, um, you know, had heavier funding for sure, but they still do a tremendous amount with, you know, what little they have. And as Dirk mentioned, the 100% renewable plan is, I think they're going to, the energy task force there will get quite involved in that. Okay, moving on to Heritage Commission. Dirk, you started up. Uh, yeah, this one, um, I'm not really connected to Heritage a whole lot, and uh, but I know people are. So I supported this to the tune of the 5,000. Okay, and Andy? You're muted. An important part of our community and I think that uh, you know lots of projects have, have been ongoing and I'm realizing how much uh, as our tourist uh, business continues to grow in the community uh, the interest in heritage uh, and the uniqueness of our computer uh, community comes through so it's a it's it's one I can easily support okay Chris yeah, very much the same. I mean, the, I put them up for the full amount and it's pretty much their core funding. Uh, they do a lot with the money that we give them. Yeah, Stuart? Uh, yeah, it's not really a passion of mine, but it seems like they're doing what we ask of them. So uh, I supported their ask. Gary? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I love their report and just uh, uh, teasing apart the the little neighborhoods and and uh, I think that's it's important that we have somebody that that's really sort of tracking our history so all in. Yeah, and we do have a new heritage plan that Council has approved um, and they're you know looking to work on that plus I think they've got some great new members they, there seems to be a lot of energy in that group right now they've got new members and kind of pushing members around so they could bring more people in which I think is great. Um, I don't think we ever want to turn down a, a keen volunteer. Uh, so that's great. I have no idea why we've lost Janice. So hopefully Janice is coming back on before we start voting on things. Um, oh, there she is. Hi, Janice. Do you want to speak to um, Heritage Commission? No, you're good. Okay, moving on to Trail Society. Start with Andy. Uh become an important part of our community in so many different ways. Uh, uh, a main driver for our off season, I think it's summer and, and the uh, non-winter activities, uh, trails have become not uh, just a nice to have, but a critical part of our uh, economy as well. So um, continue to wish to uh, support them. And I know they take that money and, and turn it into uh, considerably more value. Yeah, we do leverage well. Uh, Janice. Yeah, I mean, the trails, absolutely. They uh, increase the quality of life to uh, our community. Again, our prospects to retain and attract new members to the community. Um, I do take into account that, uh, you know, the trails uh, grant and aid that we give directly to KCTS. Uh, on top of that, we do pay a portion of the regional <coughs> as regional members. We pay 17% of that as well as maintaining the trails within our own community. So, um, but it's definitely a group that is well supported and uh, adds value to our community. So I'd like to see them get an increase, but perhaps not the whole increase they're asking for. Sure. Yeah, this one I supported fully. Um, uh, I think the stuff that I've seen over the past two years, they're, they work their butts off to get um, membership and other funding and they don't have a gate so it's very hard to get you know assurance of member driven so yeah I support it. Chris? Yeah I also supported with uh, with the full amount um, I'm very impressed with with the group and what they've done over the last couple of years uh, specifically the last year with uh, with their growth and and I think that uh, it's still budding, and I think that there's a lot of opportunities in the next few years. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing more. Great. Terry? Uh, just two points. Uh, yeah, the Trail Society consistently ranks some of the highest in those uh, surveys that we've taken with the community is in list of importance, and I think it's uh, tremendous value. Um, you know, uh, for the money we invest, we get, we get a tremendous product out there. So I fully support it. Yeah, I do. I do as well. Um, Stuart has a conflict, so he's actually supposed to be video off, <laughs> but he's quiet. That's good. Um, 
but um, I totally support um, the the uh, Trail Society too. I'd like to give them the full amount that they asked for. I think they deserve it. But the problem is we have a lot of deserving groups, and so I kind of kind of did the middle of the road thing and, and gave them not gave them more than they got last year, but not quite as much as what they were asking. Um, but I also think, well, if you know, it's possible that we can that they can get topped up in, in, in some fashion. Um, okay, so let's see. Yes, Janice. Sorry, I forgot to say the other note that I had here, which was at the bottom of a bunch of other stuff that I didn't say, is that I also think that, you know, there's a couple of these groups that are, and, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to do anything detrimental because I know, uh, and I'm sure Stuart's listening, he does a great job of getting grants and he shouldn't be punished for that and the group shouldn't be punished for that. But I do think that they're going to um, be able to access some significant money coming through the next few years. Um, from both provincial, provincial and federal uh, government levels. So, and I know that Stuart will be all over that. Yeah, that's for sure. But nobody can guarantee a grant, so we we can't we can we can, we can think about that, but we can't count on that for, for any of our groups, right? I think that. Yeah, that, I, I think the other thing is too that that the revenues that we support uh, those the organizations they're able to use and lever that money. So if they don't have a base revenue, then they can't sometimes applications uh, are only, you know, they're matching funding. So they have to have a base amount of funding. And I think that's where we come in. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Um, that's something I was going to say and I totally forgot, but it wasn't, it wasn't just for trails. It was, oh, oh yes. I know what I wanted to say at the beginning of the meeting for any of our attendees who are still listening. A committee of the whole is when we make recommendations to council. The decisions we make tonight are not final. They'll be finalized in January because we make a recommendation to council when we approve the minutes that happen on our first January meeting, that's when they're finalized. And it's possible we're looking into some of these things. It's possible that there could be some uh, COVID restart um, funding that we might be able to push towards some of our some of our groups, particularly ones that have lost revenue. So that's something, something to bear in mind too. Um, more for the audience than anything, I just want you to know that things may not be completely finalized today. Okay, so Stuart can come back. If you're listening, come on back. Hopefully he's listening or, yep, there he is, good man. Okay, now we're on RCAC. So uh, let's get Chris, start that up. I am very impressed with RCAC as always. I love the arts and everybody knows that. Uh, I support with full amount. I look forward to what we get to have after all of this is done. Um, I think the arts are a, a, a lifeblood in our community um, and I look forward to it. Okay, Terry. Um, not much to add. This seems like a slam dunk for, again, uh, the services that they give our community and what they're asking. So um, I fully support them. Okay, Andy. And it's just a, you know, a stellar organization that uh, I think brings tremendous community pride to our uh, to us uh, and and the, and the uh, you know for the money that we invest uh, we get so much back in 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 favor so uh, fully support it. Okay, Janice. Yeah, I fully support their ask um, this year. Uh, the only my only thought about it is that I know from now from being in this position uh, that we do support them with a number of donations in kind, and then I, it would be interesting, or I would it would be preferable to have an idea of what that value is along with the straight out cash grant and aid value of uh, our support. So are you talking about public works? Uh, make yeah, you know, I, yeah, yeah in, installing things, uh, you know, blocking things off. The events they do, the work they do is great, um, but I think we need to have a better uh, idea for our next go round about what the real cost of, uh, the cost of our support is. Okay. Um, I think we, we do get a lot of that information in our financial plan when it talks about um, public works and where they put their time. But um, if staff wants to send us a note on that, they can. But it's a good point. Okay, let's see. Who am I missing? Stuart and Dirk, I think. Yeah, I got nothing to add. That's totally in. Okay. Dirk? Yep, same thing as Stu, without the accent. 
<laughs> okay, that's good. All right. Um, let's see. We are we are at the library, right? Did I miss one? Museum. Oh, sorry. Museum. We're at the museum. Uh, let's start with Stuart. Yeah, I supported uh, an increase there. Um, I did not support the whole thing. Uh, I didn't see the, the justification for the whole amount, um, but some. And to Janice's point, uh, my, my sense is that we, we do also fund the infrastructure there as well. And that it is a cost to the community and it would be useful to understand the full cost of the service as we're making these these judgments. Okay, well, we, we do get that material. There was a report that um, Elma sent out, uh, the facilities report that did have a lot of that. Um, yeah, I, I just think if we're going to be just making decisions about the value of the museum to the community, it's helpful to have all the information of what it actually costs us as we make that decision. Okay. Uh, Dirk. Um, yeah, similar to Stu, I, I didn't uh, do an increase, uh, just I didn't really see the justification there. And they do have uh, a gate and a door and ability to get more revenue that way. Uh, maybe not as much as they're asking, but yeah, I support them, just not with the increase. Okay, Janice? Yeah, I thought they were, uh, you know, they were asking for a 14% increase. And uh, over the years, I've watched them grow their programming for kids, for adults, for seniors, um, organize events. Of course, this last year, it's been hard to keep an eye on that, provide jobs for uh, a lot of our uh, graduating kids and university kids coming back to town for the, uh, for the summer through um, Student Works. Again, you know, we've got a we've got a museum director who is outstanding at getting grants, and so I hate to punish them because they're good at something. Um, so I actually would love to be able to support them for their full ask. Okay, Andy. Uh, yeah, I basically uh, agree. Um, certainly uh, looked at. Uh, the programming and the success of the museum in the last few years has has you know shown that they're very dedicated uh, people that are that are behind the board and then of course um, as well the staff that they put in place so uh, continue to support them not quite as much as what they had uh, asked uh, but uh, but close Chris uh, over the years, I've watched the, our just amazing museum and the amazing people that are there, you know, um, go from not having a lot of momentum to to really creating some momentum up there. And, and I, I, my fear is the last year is, has beaten them up quite a bit. And, you know, I, I think that uh, with the museum, the, uh, the major portion of their job is funding and making sure that the people are working and the archives are complete. and, the, and we are able to preserve everything um, that we want to for the future from the past. Uh, I supported with almost what they wanted um, just because I needed to put some money somewhere else, but uh, I would have uh, brought it up to the full amount if I could have. Thanks, Terry. Um, super quickly, I ran into math problems. I want to support them fully and uh, I looked at their proposal, but uh, was just trying to figure out how to take what money we have and allocate it fairly. So um, they took a little bit of a, had to carve a little bit off for them. Okay. Um, and I'm, I'm the same. I think they've done a fantastic job. I would love to support them. I think they, they, their programming, the, the contribution that they're making to the community is unlike anything the museum's ever done, you know, at least in recent memory. And, I, and I'd like to support them fully. But again, we have a lot of valuable programs, so I wasn't able to go the full amount, but I did an increase over last year, and who knows, maybe it'll come out higher. Um, this is another one that I'd be very curious in finding out um, going forward, not for today, but just what sort of loss they really experienced um, because of COVID, because again, restart plans, it's possible there'll be somewhere that we can, you know, make up for some of that from our nonprofits. Um, okay, so we are now at the library. So let's see, library, we have several conflicts here, so please turn your cameras off. Okay, we're down to the, the, the hardcore here. Stuart, start us off. 
Yeah, love the library, support what they do. They're doing a great job. Um, I supported what I thought was a reasonable increase. Thank you, Derek. Um, yeah, I, I supported them full amount. I, I think it's a free service. It's unbelievable for the community and uh, definitely in this year has been a really nice touchstone for me and a lot of families. So yeah, I definitely support it. Chris? Totally value the library and uh, gave them as much as I could at the, at the time. Yeah, Terry. Um, all good. Uh, I think library is a cornerstone of any community and we've got a great one. Yeah, I agree. I, I wanted to give them the full amount because I, I do honestly feel that we underfund them given how other libraries are funded. Um, and, I, and I wish we could do more, but we are bound by the decisions we've made about how much taxpayer money to give to community groups. So I, I couldn't do the full amount either. But Okay, so now we get our conflicted people. And, and just for people listening, their conflicts are because they have partners who are on the board and that uh, is considered a conflict, but they're back now to talk about the Tennis Society. So uh, Dennis, start us off. Yeah, I think the Tennis Society has quietly worked underneath the, uh, underneath the view of, anybody, of everybody else. Um, I do play some tennis, not as much as I'd like to get the chance to, but um, you know, the group of volunteers works very hard to maintain the um, courts with minimal amount of um, spending and they are putting money away for a full uh, structural rebuild um, which is sort of a make or break moment for that uh, for that facility in town. Um, I think that the two thousand dollars of additional insurance is probably similar to if you're used to renting a facility and playing a sport or running a tournament or running an event, uh, very similar to uh, the sort of insurance that one would look at, but goes over the course of uh, the whole season. Because uh, as Laura mentioned, they don't have a gate, they're constantly open. Um, so I supported them for their full ask. Okay, Andy. I didn't support them for their full ask, but it was more a math issue. I was looking at uh, some increases for everybody, but more based on their ask last year with uh, a slight increase for this year. Recognize that um, that insurance is a bit of a sticky issue and I'd certainly like to see if our staff can be any more creative in finding solution there for them. Uh, I'm a little surprised that $2,000, $2,000 premium. Um, and uh, you know, I don't know if there's options that they could get insurance through the city uh, with one of our providers. Maybe, maybe there's some creativity available there. But I think those things have already been looked at a bit at, at this point. Stuart. Yeah, I don't really understand this one. Um, and I'm not, don't feel like I'm up to speed enough with the, with the situation and the demand in the community. It just seems like a pretty small group. You know, I'm nothing against tennis, but um, seemed quite a jump and I wasn't prepared to support the full amount. So did a bit of a compromise. Okay, Dirk. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I do see actually how busy it is and it is busy all the time and my kids love to use it. I just see a missed opportunities to fundraise. I mean, there was there were no efforts in the spreadsheet to, to have fundraisers or do bottles like RAS and, uh, uh, and the insurance question. I thought like Andy, there's something creative that can be done. So I didn't support an increase, partly for math as well. Okay, Chris. Yeah, insurance. Oh my goodness. Um, we've been hammered all over the place with insurance over the last year or two. Um, so I get what where they're coming from and it's a surprise to their budget. Um, I've given them a little bit more than, than, um, than across the board here a little bit. Um, and main reason is we've got an asset there that, that really needs some work. So I'm hoping that uh, it could be a little bit of a um, a jump start for them to get that going. Okay, Terry. Um, as we discussed this, uh, I was a bit lost with the the insurance piece too. So uh, I'll confess a bit of uh, confusion along with Stuart. So that's that's why I had uh, said I'm not sure that that that's a reason. So um, I again support tennis. Um, don't play myself much anymore, but um, I'd love to support them 
again, math. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm conflicted about this too. We, the only reason that their ask has gone up significantly is because of demand by the city for them to get insurance. So we've got a group here who is doing the maintenance on a city owned facility. Um, if they walk from this, my guess is it'll cost the city a lot more having our own people do the maintenance on the facility than it will having this group do it. So I feel like, uh, you know, and, and I also keep going back and forth on, on the insurance. The insurance, I understand the insurance. If, if you know, we, we insure the tennis courts. If somebody trips over the court, you know, trips over a line on the court and breaks their leg, they're going to sue the city. Um, if they trip over a broom that's been left by a volunteer or something, then they're going to sue the city and the society. I mean, I mean, part of it to me just seems, it just drives me crazy. These kind of liability issues drive me crazy. Because the other thing is the instructor who is, as far as I know, the only instructor they have is Paul Bavillier, and he carries insurance through Canada Tennis Association, whatever, Canada Tennis, whatever it is, the society. Um, so I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm very uncomfortable with this one. I feel like because we asked them to get that money and they don't have great ways to, to raise money. And as, as was pointed out, they're kind of a maintenance group. They're not really marketers or not really, they're not really running membership the way Blackjack runs membership, for example. And maybe they should, maybe they should get board members on there who do that if that's what we want. We had an email from our staff that said, well, staff could take over and staff could start you know, booking the courts and staff could start doing that. And you know, that is a big expense and a time commitment and all that we'd be looking at too. So I think we're boxing these guys into the corner by not getting the money to do something we asked them to do on a facility that we own. So I'm very frustrated. Uh, Carrie. Kathy, um, thanks. And, and uh, again, this is sort of my first um, rodeo with this, with this group. So I'm uh, finding my feet around the process, but uh, we are, um, these motions get, um, or, or the conversation that we're having tonight gets moved forward to January to make final decisions on these things. So um, for what it's worth, I'd like to um, um, put some energy into finding out more about this because I'm with you. It doesn't, doesn't quite feel right. Okay. Yeah, we, we can do that. I mean, we're going to make motions tonight. Um, on, we're going to go back through and make motions tonight and hopefully get some things sorted out. They're finalized on January, but you know, mm. the motion, the motion on tennis could be, let's figure it out. Let's figure it out between now and January. You know, that's okay. Okay. Um, okay Janice. Yeah, I was just going to make a quick point on the insurance, although $2,000 sounds like a lot of insurance. Uh, you know, we run a three-day hockey tournament, and it's over $500 for three days. So it's not apples to apples facilities, but um, and it doesn't. And the insurance we get is strictly to indemnify the city. Right. If one of our players gets injured, there's no additional coverage for that. It's just so that if the city and we get sued, the insurance will cover it. Right. That's all it covers. Yep, for sure. Yeah, I, I get that. Okay, so let's set tennis aside for the moment and we'll move on to Tourism Roslyn. So let's see, uh, Chris, why don't you start off? Tourism Rossland. I gave Tourism Rossland just about their ask. Um, and I mean, they're just, so they're core. Um, we need to keep them, uh, and I talked about momentum a little while ago and keep that momentum going. Um, I'm looking forward to the government coming to the table a little bit more in the next little bit. So I'm hoping that uh, we'll see some more funding for them, but we got to keep them rolling. Yeah. Okay. Janice. Yeah, I actually, uh, I actually reduced their funding on my sheet. Um, I'd like to see the tourism Rawson be more industry funded than municipally funded. Um, I think they've done a great job. They, I think we should fund them somewhat as a municipality because for sure, uh, having resort-like features around our community adds quality of life for our uh, residents. Um, but, you know, they're not our primary industry. The people who work in there in, in uh, tourism aren't our, the majority of our um, employed workers in town. Um, but they are a nice thing to have. So I'd like to see the industry itself do more to promote its own marketing firm. Okay. Andy? 
Yeah, I like what Janice had just said. I think it, it does uh, it does in some way, um, you know, my, my recognition of the fact that it is a business oriented um, support for the community. Uh, and, and yet um, uh, it very much is tied into the success of the community on a whole. So I would like to see uh, uh, both a combination of the businesses continue to step up um, to support their own marketing, their own development. Uh, but I can see as well the importance of having uh, our community uh, be a player and a member of that uh, as well. So we'll con I'll continue to, to, to support and have, and ha although not a full ask, uh, close to it. Okay. Yeah, I supported what I thought was a reasonable increase. I think uh, Tourism Rosin does a good job. Um, I think we're just making our contribution to a, to a much larger function that they perform. Okay, Terry? Yeah, I think tourism is, uh, again, a critical piece uh, of our economy. I, th I think, I think uh, a little differently than Janice, the reason that I, um, the reason that I, marked it down was and, and again to borrow from J Janice's words I was looking at how well they're doing on on and looking at those different other uh, funding streams and again caught in this uh, how do we fund everybody and I just I said um, this was a this was a group that I thought was um, pretty solid and, and could maybe not get quite the support um, that they asked for okay um, I also disagree with Janice. I think one of the reasons we have such a vibrant community as we do is directly related to tourism. You know, you look at the other communities around us and, you know, they don't have the same amount of, you know, hotels and restaurants and shops and, and especially shops that we have. And, and I think a lot of that is attributed to tourism. A town, uh, our latest population figures are 3,900 people. That's not a big town. And yet we're able to support a market like Ferraro's and, you know, some, some really great things. So I think tourism is, is really, really important. Um, I think these are very uncertain times. It's, it's very uncertain what's going to happen. Funding has been earmarked from the government, and that's great, and that will help. But um, I, I, I still think we need to support um, tourism as, you know, as much as, as, much as we can. Um, Dirk is off this. He has a, a contract uh, uh, conflict at the moment, but I think we're done with tourism rosin, so Dirk can come back. Oh wait, Stuart, Stuart. Yeah, I just wanted to chip in again. I mean, I, you know, I think tourism rosin is doing a great job, not just supporting, you know, promoting tourism, but they're also promoting the city, um, and that that's not an, a, an unmitigated upside. I mean, there is a, you know, I'm, I'm, I have a bit of a challenge with the, the the effects of that success and the and the impact on unaffordability in the community you know i think that's a, a challenge we really haven't addressed in in all sorts of ways but purely as promoting the community and promoting tourism i think you're doing a great job when we're getting good value for money but i don't think we you know perhaps we're not putting enough attention to some of those uh, unintended downsides yeah, which, which is one of the reasons the OCP uh, review is going to be so important because growth management is one of the things that go we're going to be looking at, you know, for sure. Yeah. And because there's tourism brings lots of people here who stay permanently, like me, Janice. Well, me, well, me too, Kathy. <laughs> Absolutely. I, and I'm not, uh, I'm not ever trying to take away from the value that they've uh, brought to the community. Um, but I was going to say, you know, I think that this last year we've really seen that communities who entirely rely on tourism are really suffering. Um, we haven't lost, uh, I think one of our businesses closed, but uh, may have been planning on it anyway. We haven't lost our businesses. We have an affluent uh, permanent resident community that supports our businesses. But absolutely, tourism is on the icing. So I'm looking for more balance versus... Um, going all in on tourism. Okay, great. Um, okay, so we'll get Dirk back in. I see we now have the camera on for staff. Hello, staff there. You guys look like you're in a huge hall. We don't need a new city hall. Obviously, yeah. you've got room. Anyone hey, just, just one quick note on the tourism we're also ask is that, is that 
you know, basically the money that the city received from the COVID-19 safe restart fund from the province is really adequately determined to be part of this kind of the decision-making process when we look at trying to allocate those funds coming up in the new year to help with the restarting of the programs in Charles and Charles and would be like a top list candidate for money to be funded from other sources rather than the city coffers to help out with some of the um, discussion that was just um, uh, just had. Okay, that's great information. Thank you. Um, okay, so now we are going to talk about the Trail Chamber and there's been some chat in the chat about members and there's a note in there that says there's 49, I think it says 49 Ros Roslyn business members and that there are 25 new ones this year. And I'm not sure if that's in Roslyn or if that's in general. So that's, that's something, but while we maybe get a little clarification there, if Doug wants to talk to Rachel, <laughs> get specific there. Um, Stuart. Um, I believe we just asked Doug about that, didn't we? And he said 15. Yeah, that was a clarification and an upgrade. I don't think Doug knew exactly. He said he wasn't exactly sure, but he thought 15 rang a bell, but he's gone ahead and provided more accurate figures there for us. Okay. Right. So, okay. I believe that 49 is he, referring he, to. And he's still on. I see Chamber has 49 members, which I think is Ralvin members. And. Then there's an, another note that says 25 new businesses this year, but I don't know if that is from Roslyn or if that is in the general. And the note says, I think in general. So there we, there we have that. Okay, well, if there's anything more that comes through on that chat, we can consider that. But let's start with, uh, Stuart, you can start with Chamber. This is for the high level advocacy program. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I just wasn't clear on this. I mean, I, f I feel like there's there's some element of, you know, providing general support to business, which I, you know, support, but but as well, you know, if this is just going to be an industry group, why does an industry pay for it? Um, you know, I, I really confess, I, I really wasn't clear on what that balance would be. So I, uh, I went for a, what I thought was a, a lower end compromise on that. Okay, Terry. Yeah, I, I wasn't uh, I wasn't one hundred percent confident in the value proposition of the trail. So um, again, I, I support uh, in general. Uh, understand that um, businesses need to have uh, a body to advocate um, advocate for them. Um, that's great that they're there. I, I I wasn't clear on that, and that affected my my contribution. Okay, Chris. I think their ask was quite large. Um, in comparison to what we get for um, what service that we have received in the, in the past. However, I want to look forward on this. Um, and, and I think that we, with the new economic development task force that we're forming and the way that we're going to start looking at business again in Rossland soon, um, the funding's going to go uh, a long ways, I believe. I hope anyway. So I'm going to be looking at it very closely over the next little while. Okay, Janice. Yeah, I thought uh, I couldn't. Um, I couldn't think of a way to give them their full ask either. But I did uh, want to support them significantly. I think that one of our strategic goals is to uh, increase cooperation regionally, and because they are a trail and area, including Rawson organization, and they get uh, businesses and people talking to each other, doing business together. I think that uh, I think that that moves us towards our goal there. Um, as with Chris, I'm looking forward on this one. Um, I know that the application specifically talked about high level advocacy, but I have seen them doing a lot of uh, local programs as well. And I think that uh, I think this is um, this is a group that would be well worth supporting to help our businesses grow and uh, get their feet on the ground. And, uh, you know, Brian might be able to mention or pipe in that if the trail might be something that would also or if the chamber would also be something that the restart funds might be uh, applicable to yeah. yeah we're not sure if that would be the case or not but we can look at it some more okay andy yeah i i, I will uh mirror a number of the comments i already heard i certainly think that um uh they're in a position a stronger position now to uh, to, to advocate for our businesses. And I'm, I'm excited about the fact that they've pulled in a bunch of new members. And I know a, a, a lot of Rosin businesses have committed, 
um, to them. Uh, the other thing I found out is that um, Beaver Valley uh, Fruit Vale does support uh, the chamber as well. So, you know, uh, not just tra trail, and I know it's a, a centered trail uh, organization, but obviously um, it's nice to see sort of the lower Columbia businesses collaborate. And I think that as, as pointed out earlier, some of the other business initiatives that are going around uh, and in, boy, oh boy, do we ever need advocates, advocates now uh, going forward uh, with, with the pandemic um, and, the, and the hit that are all, all our businesses are experiencing for the next while. So I think they're in a position to, to really uh, be a, a serious advocate. So I'd like, you know, I have given them some seed money to get going. Okay, Dirk. Uh, I think I, I see this similarly to Stu. I do think that this should be sort of industry driven and given that there's, uh, I can't keep up with the numbers there, but 49 or more businesses, that's a hundred bucks each and it gets to more than what we're offering them. Uh, if we look at the averaging and then businesses that I talked to really said their sink or swim is going to be tourists. If tourists come back in, they're going to be fine. If tourists don't come back in, they're not. And so for me, I didn't see the value in this, and I do think it should be industry driven. Okay, that's great. Um, I have seen value in it. I've seen particularly um, this year with how they were a really one-stop shop for COVID information. They were fantastic. They really did a very good job of connecting with businesses, not just their members, but also any business, whether they were a member or not, which may have contributed to why they've got 25 new ones this year, 11 of those from Roslyn, because they did provide a great resource. Um, and, and I think it's, you know, they're, they are kind of unique. We've got other economic development entities like the LCIC, but these guys are really focused on the businesses, sort of local, you know, bricks and mortar businesses. Um, so I did try and give them some, some money as well. Again, got into, into not enough money to spread as many places as I'd like, but that's where we got to. Okay, so we're gonna move on to WildSafe. WildSafe, this one, um, we do, we are required to do the amount that they've requested for the period. They, we can't horse trade on that one. So it's support or not support here. Terry, start with you. Uh, yeah, I, I wanna to continue to support WildSafe. Chris. Uh, there are new chicken bylaw officers, so I got to support it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Janice. Hoops are us. I'm in for support. Okay, Andy. Yes, and they may be uh, by, uh, chicken bylaw officers, but I think they'll be good chicken education uh, teachers too for our community. So keen to support. Here, here, even more so. Totally. Yeah. Okay, Stuart. Two big thumbs up. Okay, Dirk. Yeah, doing it for the chickens. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm doing it for the bears, actually, because we get a lot of new residents in here, and we have to continually educate people about wildlife-human interactions, so I support as well. Okay, so now we're done with all the groups. Now I want to go back and ask uh, council. We have, we have two ways to do this. We could take a moment, look at your spreadsheets, if you wanna massage the numbers anyway after as a result of this discussion, we can do that. Then we can do it two ways. We can have somebody put in a motion and we yay or nay it, or you go over and look at column D, which goes in there and um, actually did do the average thing that we do with the SIP grants. And if you live with those, can we, can we get the spreadsheet uh, so we see all of them? Oh no, we do see all of them, sorry, yeah. I see. Yeah. Oh, now I don't see them, sorry. <laughs> I said the wrong thing. Um, yeah, we, no, go, go back over. So we keep the red column. We see everybody in the red column. Yeah, that's perfect. So the average number there is what we would give to each of those groups. So I'm gonna go through, I'll just go through each. And if you want a different number, we still have to add up to the 287,253 at the bottom. So we can't go hog wild crazy. This does add up to the right number at the bottom. Janice. Well, I was just gonna, I actually had it on my uh, uh, notes to start off with, although we were a little random getting started. But the, you know, we, we set our funding limit um, before we started working through leases and new agreements and operating agreements with uh, a lot of our societies. 
Um, so a lot of their funding actually came from our operating fund, our operating uh, budget versus our grant and aid budget previously. As we rewrite everything, now it's coming out in grant and aid. I don't, I mean, uh, it, that would be a, unfortunately a staff thing to figure out you know, how we took the money from operating and now are putting in grant and aid. But if we don't adjust our funding limit, uh, the ultimate result will be that we'll be reducing funding available for everybody. Are you making a suggestion? Well, I, c committee of the holes are for discussion. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I do think, I do think that if we don't, uh, that if we just you know pick an arbitrary percentage of our uh, earned income and uh, we don't take into account that we are creating more transparent operating agreements and uh, lease agreements etc cetera, etc cetera, um, where we're asking where we're instead of taking funds out of our operating budget to support um, groups we're actually embedding it in the grant and aid so it's all visible um, that that grant and aid is naturally going to grow because we're even though we're not giving them more support than we normally did, the amount that we're actually going to have to have in grant and aid is going to have to grow, or the natural result will be that we'll have to cut support for our groups. I'm not, I'm not following you, Janice. Yeah, I'm not actually following you either. I mean, as, as the percent, as, the, as our tax revenue grows, this fund grows which happened like last year we had 273 and this year we have 287 or whatever the difference was, right? So yeah. we, we then also have, as we had this time, we had more groups come to us, which then created a, created a problem. I, I'm, I guess I'm not, I'm not seeing what you're asking to okay. do. Okay, I'll try again. <laughs> you small words and short sentences. Well, <laughs> Wait, let me see if Dirk, maybe Dirk can translate Janice speak for me. <laughs> well, I, I'll do my best, but I, I think as an example, if the museum has been asked to cover some of their operations that they weren't asked to cover before, then if we give them the same amount, you know, their revenue will go down because they're, they're not getting some of the money from the city. I think that was Janice's point, perhaps, Janice? Kind of the same, only I think previously, and then we can use the museum as the example, uh, previously, what would happen is the museum would get a grant and aid, but then a lot of the things um, would get covered out of the city's operating budget. So like, for instance, uh, utilities or maintenance. Um, and as we've gone through and renewed a bunch of those leases and operating uh, agreements, we have taken that cost of maintenance, light bulbs, you know, um, basic stuff and we've put it into the grant and aid. So we haven't actually changed the amount that we're supporting the, the um, group with, we've just increased the grant and aid amount. I can see staff's gonna help us. I see, I see staff will help us. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna call on Stuart and then I'm gonna ask staff if they wanna jump in here. Stuart. I think if we're asking more of the societies or the groups, then that's up to them to explain and argue why they should get more. Okay, um, staff, <laughs> I can't see any of you, oh, there you are in your tiny little box there. Yeah. Yes, Brian. Uh, so just on, if we're using the museum as an example, which is probably the most relevant one we could be talking about. It, um, when we renegotiated the contract last year, we also increased their grant and aid for some of the things that we're, we wanted them to look at trying to do. Overall, in the budget, we did not remove any of the additional expenses that we would have used for operations. So really, the overall funding for the museum on the city's perspective went up a little bit. And so we basically, instead of transferring our, our, our fees, like our fees we transferred to them to that, for them to use, but we also gave them grant and aid to cover those fees, but we did not reduce our uh, expenses on the line item to help to either look at supporting them for other things in the future or taking any type of surpluses that we have from that operations and trying to put it into uh, discussion purposes for asset management plan to move forward with capital replacement plans or you no know, additional activities and things like that. So, so that's kind of how that one played out. Okay, thanks. Does that help Janice? I, mean, I don't think it does, but I'm not really sure how better to explain what I'm trying to say. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, here, let me ask this question. Right now, we're looking. <coughs> excuse me. We're looking at the two hundred eighty-seven thousand dollars. We've looked at each group's, you know, application. We've done tentative allocation of those monies. Um, are you un? No. Please leave the spreadsheet up. Um, are you? Uh, comfortable with going forward and, and looking at this, we can look at either going with the averages that are in column D, or we can put up individual motions about um, amount, specific amounts that you wanna change, or are you saying this is a gong show and we need to start over and so we've wasted our time here? <laughs> not item D. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. Definitely not. Sure. I'm, I'm okay with the averages. Um, I just, perhaps if we could round some of the numbers off, it's just just because, it, you know, I'd hate all those people having to enter all those extra numbers in over the next few years. Yeah, <laughs> they are three and four year, year, year things. Um, okay, we've had a request to take a quick break before we go on. Is that, oh no, we're all good. We don't need to take a break. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, Okay, so we have a suggestion that we look at the average column and round the numbers off. <laughs> I would second that. Okay, okay. Um, unless, unless somebody wants to change their, their tally, I, I don't, can't think yeah, of a well, thing we're gonna argue over the, you know. Yeah, that would, that would be the first thing that I, that I was going to say. Does anybody want to change any of the numbers that they put in their in their column? Dirk first, I, I, and Dennis, you had your hand up, and then Andy. Yeah, I, I don't I don't want to change any of them. I think if we were to look at the sort of the average column, the thing that jumps out at me is that you know blackjack we're offering them ten percent of their ask. You know, I don't know what they'd do with twelve hundred bucks. The tennis court could do more with twelve hundred bucks. So. Maybe we can move it around to my suggestion to fit the organizations that could benefit more from this fund. Right. Okay. Janice and then Andy. Uh, I was just going to say that in, in terms of blackjack, I mean, after the conversation has gone around the table, so to speak, um, you know, I, I do, uh, you know, the, that they're a fee for service type business. Um, I think that, you know, they probably can manage without funds from us. Okay. Uh, okay, so Andy, you were next. Uh, just looking at the fact that if we were committing to uh, or, or voting on each uh, organization, it, only only two of us supported Blackjack. So uh, right there, it, you know, it wasn't a majority. So if, okay. and, and yet all the rest of them, it looks like a majority have supported those organizations. So if we do it uh, democratically, then Blackjack wouldn't wouldn't be in a position to receive any funding. Yeah, reallocate I think, them. I think that's a that's a that's a fair point. So sorry, Blackjack, but those funds are going to have to be reallocated. Okay, so we now have um, Golden Bear and Blackjack are both off the list. So now we've got Sea Bean, which is pre-approved, so we don't have to talk about them. Uh, we have Sustainability Commission, so we now have. <coughs> some money to play with here to um, top up these other other groups. And we can do it. We could have... Uh, don't, Andy, don't Andy and Janice have money to reallocate? Yeah. I'm, I mean, yeah, we can just... Can't we just open the, open the sheet and... That, yeah. yeah, why don't you just tell... If, I think Rachel's controlling the sheet there. Why don't you just tell Rachel where you want that money to go and, let, and the others will... <laughs> The others will average. Don't do it in the red column, Rachel. Do it in the person's column when they tell you. So go over to Janice because there's a formula in that D column. So Janice, where do you want? You just had whatever money. What did you have there? You had four thousand. Yeah, I uh, had four thousand. Okay, uh, so you can put it on uh, tourism. There it is. Do we have to make a motion to not give Blackjack any money? Uh. No, I don't think we do because we haven't actually made too many motions yet. I mean, we we can, but I don't think we have to. Let's okay. So you put it all on. Yeah, you are you are playing blackjack there, aren't you? Put it all on <laughs> in a way. Okay, and then um, let's see who else had the money up there. Oh, Andy, Andy. going to put yours. So I'll put it on the tennis club. 
Okay. So you go to tennis, but you had 4,000. That's going to put them over. Or what did you have in there? I had four, yeah, I had 4,000, but, but is that what it averaged out? It's not going to be that amount, right? You had 5,000. You had 5,000, yeah. Right, right. Sorry. I, I can't see my contribution. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Got to go back to my own sheet here. Yeah. Okay. So, so you're putting it all on tennis. Yeah, and however that works out, I mean, if, well, let's if, see what it looks like. Put eight thousand yeah. and seventy-five in on tennis, and let's see what it does there. Okay, so that puts them up. That's that's yeah, that's that's pretty good. Okay, so now let's go through the list here and and take a look. So we've already accomplished. So we're at Sustainability Commission. They're going to get thirteen thousand plus. Now we do have. You know what, Stuart? I think you're thing is, I don't know, just too complicated to, to round them up. We still have to get a number. Okay, I'm fine with that. I'm just point, my, my point is, I don't know whether it's good process to have more than they ask for, you know. Um, I mean, what's what's to stop no, some no, unscrupulous? No, 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 no one's getting more than they ask for. Well, Andy's assigning more than what the tennis society is asking for. But that doesn't matter. His, his, uh, his well, what, what, what would stop some unscrupulous counsellor from putting 287,000 on the one group and yeah well yeah i guess you got that point you got that point oh dear we've had that happen before <laughs> we did well I, we've I, had I that do, we had CPI one year i do i do agree with Stuart. It, it offsets the average if we're weighting it really really heavily in one place yeah okay. i don't think i think okay. that's the reason we want to set okay so janice and let's see janice did you go over on yours too where's janice, nope. janice? No, janice I didn't. You're no okay okay sorry andy you're gonna have to reapport yours. you can't put more than five thousand put put andy's tennis at five thousand okay Okay, so now you can either allocate some more money elsewhere, and there's many worthy groups on the line who would love to have your contribution, um, or you can put it in the uh, fund, and deal with it later. Yeah. Okay. Um, then I, and of course, uh, um, okay. Let's do it towards um, KCTS then. Okay. So KCTS. I guess they'll have leftovers. Yeah. So if you put in, I'm, you know, I've lost track of what your leftovers are. To tell you the it'll, truth. it'll total at the bottom. Just keep yeah. adding. Um, okay, yeah. so put in 30 there. 30,000 because that's their max ask. Okay, good. All right. Yes, that's right. You still got a little. Yeah, yeah. I put those formulas in there. They work, don't they? <laughs> so now you just got to do the do the uh, balance there to get to two eighty seven two fifty. So another uh, fifteen hundred bucks. Okay, find somebody so, that's short. So that uh, could be sustainability commission. You could go up on. You could yep, go up. Let's, on, let's do it to sustainability um, you commission. Go up on the museum. You could go up on tourism. I'll, I'll do it on the sustainability commission. Okay. It's got more than that. Yeah, it should be up. You can 600. There you go. Okay, you gotta take off. Take off like 50 bucks or something, whatever. 48. Beautiful. Yeah. You still got a little more to add there. Got another 200. Tourism Roslyn. Tourism Roslyn. Another 200 at Tourism Roslyn. Well, he didn't max to uh, sustainability. Yeah, you could max sustainability. Oh, let's do that then. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so sustainability commission thought, goes to thought we had. 15,000. Is that right? He needs another 200 bucks to put somewhere. Okay. Uh, tourism Roslyn was the uh, other one. Oh, that's perfect. You're done. Good. Okay, everybody. So now we need a motion. We had a motion not to do uh, uh, Golden Bear, so we'll have a motion not to do back Blackjack. Who makes the motion with tears? Ready? Dirk makes the motion, Janice seconds it. 
All in favor? Okay. And then I think we could take another motion and just say that we will accept the average uh, amounts for the other groups. And then we don't have to do each one if that's all right with staff. Staff, is that all right? Or do you want them individually? No, just do one as presented and then we'll do a spreadsheet on that and round some numbers up and then it will go to council in January for final uh, ratification. Okay, Dirk makes the motion or do you have a question? Well, I, I have a question, just cognizant of the fact that those averages take into consideration uh, the ones that Andy and Janice and Stuart and myself had that were conflicts. We've got numbers in there. So we didn't talk about them, we didn't vote on them, but we added, we contributed to the value. I don't know if that matters. Yeah, well, we used to make it matter in the in the SIP grants, right? We took them out and then it was the average. Instead of seven average, it was four average or it was six average or, or whatever. Um, oof. That does get really mathematically complicated because we're not, we're not giving the full amount in most of the cases or in some of the cases. Uh, I would like a staff recommendation on this. My inclination is to leave it as it is. You guys didn't contribute. No, to I would just say leave it as is because they're all fairly consistent to what the ask is. And it's a multiple, it's not just one counselor making a decision on this stuff. And we're going to have conflicts on this kind of idea. So as long as the ask isn't crazy, like as, as Councillor Spooner noted that he's not asking for $297,000 for the Trail Society, everything is kind of commonality here. And so I think that we're fine with the way that is presented and the way that we've done it. Okay, I, th I think that's great. All right, so I'll take a motion from someone to accept the average numbers and we'll turn it over to staff to round them up and prettify it. So who wants to do that? Janice and Terry. Okay, all in favor? All right, good. Okay, everybody. So we will now have a motion to close this meeting and then we're gonna go to a new Zoom at six o'clock. So counselors, you know how to get to the Zoom through your email and any attendees who want to come back for the regular council meeting, please check the agenda that's on our website and link at the top. Janice has a comment or she's just making the motion to adjourn. I have a quick comment. I just wondered if um, we'll, when you bring this back in January, Brian, uh, will you also bring back some information about which of these organizations might qualify for the uh, safe restart funding? Yeah, we have a staff report going about uh, a whole bunch of things about the COVID-19 staff or uh, safe uh, restart program. And so we can talk about uh, looking at these ones and see if there's an additionality that we can look at at a percentage or something to help with um, costs for 2021 potentially. That'd be okay. great. Yeah, that's great. Okay, thanks everybody. And thanks to our attendees who hung in there with us. We really appreciate your interest. Bye everyone. We'll see you all at six o'clock. <laughs>